Okay, so it's a little little after hours right now, 4.55 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time, and, and wanted to do a second video. Uh, for anyone who watched my previous video, it was, it was very lengthy, but then again, I think anyone can really talk for hours about this uh <laughs> this this stock um yeah i i could honestly sit here all day and, and make videos and, and stream and and talk uh so much about this uh stock but i i, I want to give another update because this thing is just doing something that no one is continuing to talk about which is just very very shocking um, so today we opened at 671. The low for today was six six fifty one. High was six seventy five. Um, we're currently uh, it's uh, it went down by two percent, two point six seven percent today. I, I I'll be showing the charts and some other stuff here in the few. Plus, I I I really don't want to make this video too long as well. But the volume, look at the fucking volume. That's just incredible. That volume is literally a gigantic sign. Ever since Mullen did their last reverse stock split, or rather ever since, I believe it was uh, ended January when the last warrants were extra, um, exercised, there has been no dilution at all. The entire stock market took a dump today because CPI data came in a little bit hot. Um, I believe it was 4% um, higher for inflation. Um, uh, not 4%, percent point. Uh, 0 0.04 percent higher and it came in higher than expected as well what people were expecting and also it came in higher than january uh the previous month too with cpi inflation you you're you're always at you're always um uh um back one month so february's data came out today not very well the entire market did not like it um affected the overall market in general but as for mullen Last year, all throughout 2023, even 2024, if the market was tanking, Mullen would be hit with like negative 10, 15%. We only went down 2.67% today, which is not terrible. Some stocks went down significantly more, but the volume, 223,000 shares um, traded. Our average volume is 1.51 million. Um, hopefully I'm reading that right uh yeah average volume market cap uh did, 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 did. so so we are we're still at 6.55 it's weird weeble has 6.55 um as for other places has 6.33 our float shares outstanding has not increased so they're obviously not diluting at all which is bullish low volume bullish extremely that means no one is watching the stock when nobody watches a stock, a stock typically takes off. Everyone was watching Mullen all last year. It didn't do jack shit. It did the opposite. It just continued going down. No one is talking about these things anymore. No one is paying attention to this stock. Um, I feel like I'm one of the few that's still actually watching this stock, which might be a good thing, might be a bad thing. I, I, I don't really know, but... Let's look at some other stuff. So, Mullen did not drop any news today. Typically, they come out with news um, on Tuesdays. Um, stock time, like I said, if, if you guys don't use Stock Titan, I highly recommend it. Um, I am not being sponsored at all by Stock Titan. Um, it would be nice if they did. Um, but yeah, market cap forty-four million. Float remains the same. Um, Let's look at uh, what else do I want to check out really quickly. All right, SEC filings. I've been in discords before with a lot of the Mullen community, and I, and I really hate saying this. And um, it's, I mean, I, I used to be one of those people that did not know how to find this stuff. Just literally type in Google MULN SEC um, or MULN space SEC space filings, and you're going to come up on SEC's website. There was no new filings that came out, which is extremely well, um, and also extremely bullish at, at, at the aspect. David would always be posting negative filings, especially after hours, uh, whenever there was dilution, especially typically on a Friday. Today is a Tuesday, so 
no filings came out which still is good um all these filings are well beyond justified of the meeting they just did another site that i actually like visiting every so often that i kind of really wish to get some good updates on but it's kind of really far-fetched um ben benzinga oh hopefully i'm pronouncing that right benzinga um david mitchery's net worth yeah 80 83.7 million so as of right now david has not collected any more shares for compensation which is good um because then the shares outstanding would increase if he did um at the same time he hasn't bought any shares as well I really don't expect David to be buying any shares. The only time he has ever purchased shares was one time, and it was for 100 k which was really absolutely pathetic. Supposedly, you're worth $83 mil- I, 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 I don't even think that I'll ever even be worth $83 million in my entire life. I, I do have optimism that I will achieve to be a millionaire someday. I, that, that's one of my lifelong goals. Um, hopefully I can achieve that within the next 10 years to my mid forties. But if you're worth $83 million and you've only bought a hundred thousand dollars worth of shares of your company, you, you really, I change changes around David. Hopefully you do. Um, but yeah, uh, he ended up selling 5 million shares back in February 17, 2023. If you watch my previous video, that's basically when Mullen, uh, was pretty much falling off a cliff at that point and that's also the same time ironically that i got locked up in the stock once again so no new purchases on the stock at all from david um no sec filings which is good um no press release at all news today which is really not the worst thing at all now i really want to talk to um go to the charts uh really quickly and um where are you okay so we're on the one minute chart for the entire day and as you basically pretty much see it was just pretty much a dump as soon as market opened bad cpi no news from mullen mullen runs on news more than anything uh this if there's no news typically the stock just goes on a downward pattern for anyone who doesn't know what any of these lines mean, um, exponential moving averages. So every candle stick, as you see, counts as one. So the nine EMA is the average of nine candlesticks. And we pretty much was under the nine EMA up until 10, 15. Then we pushed up a little bit and then we just been pretty much just trading, trading sideways um didn't really do a whole lot today they, there was really nothing out there that was significant um emas also are pretty much like magnets in a way if a stock pushes very far down below the ema it has to eventually come up um and same thing vice versa if a stock uh, tends to go very much higher above one of these lines eventually it has pushes down but right now we're just pretty much below the 200 EMA and, and even on the one minute it, it, if there's no news that's going to be coming out nothing significantly is going to end up happening but for anyone who doesn't know any about these uh pivot points they're, they're incredibly easy to really look at and every single morning when I wake up I update my own charts um which does help me as a trader uh whether you're day trading a stock swing trading a stock on pretty much any type of time frame we can go to the um we can go to the five minute uh we can go e e even further uh to the, to the one hour time frame all these pivot points are going to re uh remain the same for that one single day but a website that i use which is um you don't need an account and i've been using this this website for actually a, a while now is a bar chart you just type in bar chart on google brings you the website type in muln um, the site has a lot of really good information, uh, Fibonacci's moving averages, but if you just want to look at the pivots, which is pretty much averages of the previous days, um, highs and lows, and you have certain resistance points and also certain support 
um, areas as well. As you see today, we pretty much broke above the S1, the, the first pivot point. And if we go back to the chart, if we end up breaking the S1, the next level of support is the S2. So luckily today, we actually didn't break below the S2. Otherwise, the S2 now becomes resistance, and now the S3 is all support. So we would have ended up crashing all the way, potentially. We, we made it about halfway down to near the S2, but we basically pretty much just rode the S1 the entire way. And it looks like right now, after hours, we're pretty much right below the S1. So hopefully we do gain another percent and actually get above the S1. Otherwise, tomorrow, these levels are actually going to be relatively um, uh, lower, unfortunately. Hopefully, we get news dropped tomorrow. Tomorrow, David is going on um, a uh, uh, Twitter X uh, live space with uh, Cha Cha. I believe that's 8 p.m. Eastern time. I, I might record it and uh, post it. But I'm just going to be making these videos for a while because, like I said, no one is really talking about this stuff. And you gotta, if you've been following Mullen for a while, and this is just very depressing to look at on the daily time frame, but if you've been following Mullen for a while, and you go back all the way to up until the stock split, our volume was absolutely crazy, but... You can just really zoom out on the stock and see that we have just been on a absolute and just look look so these EMAs can be used like I said on any type of time frame. Uh let me let me go ahead and collapse this uh, RSI to make it bigger for you all. So you can use these exponential moving averages on any type of time frame. And as you see on the daily time frame, so each candlestick is one day. We've just been absolutely just, it's been on a waterfall, right? But ever since the end of January, you can see these EMAs kind of creating just a straight line. And this is extremely good because the last time that we actually created a bottom, and yes, we did create a all-time new low the other day. Um, I believe it was uh, two days ago, potentially. Um, and we have been creating new all-time lows, especially in this range of area. In this range of area down here, we have been creating new all-time lows, but it's not like we create a new all-time low and then, what the fuck, fall off a water cliff like we did over here. Um, November 8th, we created a new all-time low, and then we just fell off, and we fell off, and then we just trickled down. And then right around, I want to say this area, it looks like maybe we were bottoming out and then we dipped all the way back down to 15 cents. We had good news um, that came out about the lawsuit and then we ended up just crashing down even harder. But this is actually a very big range that not a lot of people maybe see or not a lot of people are talking about where we are just it seriously looks like we bottomed and if you go back all the way which is so damn depressing absolutely so depressing to go back all this way we have not created an actual bottom and i'm talking like an actual bottom bottom not even not even Mate, uh, we had, we did, okay, so we did, we did have a double bottom basically forming over here, tried bouncing up out, 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 out of uh, this area of resistance, and we finally broke above here, and then we got rejected, pretty much did not go all the way back down to this bo double bottom, we ended up breaking above in January 2023, We have not really had, it's, it's actually pretty incredible. Every single time I look at these charts, I, I see new, new type of things. If you, if you see Mullen during this time frame was actually on a uptrend. 
We created a double bottom, broke out of it, had a crash back down, but we, we ended up not crashing all the way down to this double bottom, which is bullish. And then we ended up breaking out of these two days that ended up, or this single day, uh, December 22nd, broke it all the way above beginning of January. This is when we had the, the cost to borrow average uh, big pump, broke back down, ended up trying again. Then ever since February, ever since David sold his motherfucking shares, we have not had a bottom forming. It's absolutely incredible. Ever since February 14th, Let's go back here. Uh, where are you? Um, yeah, give me give me a tinfoil hat. Oh, February 17th. Ever since David sold his shares, we have not had a bottom on this stock. But it looks like we are forming somewhat of a bottom. Knock on wood. Uh, yes, my desk is made of pure wood, not some artificial uh, hippie crap. But... Ever since David sold his shares, we have not had a actual bottom on the stock. And I am praying so hard. Um, I, I really do hope something good comes out of here. And there's just a lot of really good signs. But once again, this is not financial advice. I am not telling you to buy this. Um, be very cautious. And I just zoomed out completely. And what you saw is an absolute mess. So this should hopefully give anyone watching very caution to even think about following this stock. But uh, for anyone who's been following the stock for uh, maybe a year, maybe two years like myself, or maybe even six, seven months, it looks like something incredible might hopefully be happening. I, I really do. Um, but otherwise... Um, yeah, it's, it's, I'll uh, definitely be making another video potentially tomorrow, especially if Mullen drops news. Hopefully they do. And uh, anyone watching, <laughs> I don't even know how many people are going to be watching these videos. <laughs> I feel like I'm talking myself here. But um, um, hopefully I'm not in a way. Uh, yeah, uh, it's, I'll see anyone later.